Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having. When I do these audio casts or these simple little video casts, I'm not standing in front of a green screen anymore. I'm not doing anything with fancy software in my laptop and I'm not doing any type of, well, video editing. When I do this, I'm also allowing you to think the fact that you can multitask and do other things while you're listening to me because I'm not giving you any fancy visuals to look at while I'm talking to you. It actually makes it easier. You can work in the kitchen, you can be building your breakfast, you can be working on something around the house doing some house cleaning. I don't really care as long as you're listening. You see, in life, listening is the greatest skill and the greatest gift we give to other people. The Gift of Listening was a fabulous audio CD gifted to my organization that I once belonged to called Team and Focus, and it talks about how we listen. It also talks about how most people listen incredibly poorly. They fail to listen. They're always constantly trying to immediately react to whatever's being said in a way that's standoffish, that says, I'm in power, I'm in control, and you're not when you're listening. When you give the gift of listening, you're listening to what something is going on for someone else's life. And the gift of listening is what most people fail to do pretty much all their life. They're so busy trying to be in control of a situation that they're really not in control. You see, the person in control is usually the person who's doing something very different, but they're not t forcibly trying to be in control. They're not trying to lead the conversation necessarily, but they might be trying to lead themselves to information so they can assess you, so they can determine who you are and what you are and what kind of person you are. Something I've noticed about the food handling business right now during a time of COVID, not only have we had an incredible increase of drivers around campus, but people aren't thinking about what they're being tested on. Companies actually test employees all the time. Companies actually test drivers of regular companies every day. You're being constantly tested with whether or not you're trustworthy, not only with the safety and sanitation and hygiene of food, but you're also being tested whether or not you were careful and regardful of the company's money. You see, the company's money is not only invested in paying you back somehow for the use of your vehicle or their vehicle, but is totally invested in you in those hours and entrusting you to get there quickly, make sure the food is still hot, and openly that you're not screwing around, destroying the quality of the corporate food. It also is testing whether or not you're trustworthy with money, whether it be the corporation's money or the prelimination, the idea that the tips belong to you in particular. They might belong to you, but what does your company bylines and guidelines say? The other thing they're testing is whether or not you will deliver food to the person that it's supposed to go to. You see, sometimes companies will call you up and say, I want you to deliver this food to, say, a guy who's homeless like me. But instead, you might deliver that sandwich to someone that you know instead. They get you caught in a lie. It gets you caught on several levels. It gets you caught for theft of food. It gets you caught for theft of money and property for the other person. And it gets you caught, probably, for the vending of that food. At the same time, they're testing you with, well, other things. Are you trustworthy? to be in our shop with our cash registers. You see, stupid kids don't give back exact change. In the olden days, we had to be accountable for our drawers. What I'm always amazed about is how a manager's name might be on a Circle K drawer, but then there's a whole bunch of other people using that drawer. How does that work exactly? What I'm also curious about is why certain products in certain places are a good 50, 70 cents more than in other stores. It doesn't make sense to the people who regularly buy them. If I'm accustomed to buying a tea that is one of my favorites for a dollar or a dollar fifty, why is it that when I go into your store, it's almost three dollars? I realize we have the right to upsell certain products because we're a posh place or our capital investment, excuse me, our rental investment in the property where we sell our goods is more expensive than perhaps another one down the street that's owned completely by a company. But the truth is, if you are monkeying with prices where it says a certain price on the shelf and then you're upcharging by 30 cents so you can walk home with some pocket change, you're screwing yourself into jail. Nobody likes a thief and nobody likes their money stolen from them. So let's be really clear. If you're participating in any form of theft whatsoever, any kind of food tainting, tainting whatsoever, you can be sued at the floor by your company because you're first and foremost that company's employees. Now, I talked a little bit about the selling of goods and the improperness of social relationships based on who you work for. You always have to be cognizant of how did you meet someone. It is true that there are romantic stories where people have fallen in love across the counter. 
But what's more true is how stupid and malicious and ill-willed some employees can be because they chose their life and don't like it. They chose the level of lifestyle that they've aspired to. They've chose the level of lifestyle that they've decided to succumb to and survive with. They've chose the way that they've gone about making their money, which may not be the best way to make money. If you want to change your life about an understanding about how to make money, there are plenty of books out there by some of my favorite authors that will teach you how to adjust your thinking about money and the value of time. But what I'm saying to you is if you are monkeying with food, if you are stealing money from your corporation, if you are piddling away dime by dime out of a cash register, you're going to get caught by one of the corporate, well, secret shoppers. Now, I could say like me, but I am a secret shopper like any other customer in your store. Let me explain what the whole goal of business is if nobody taught you at your stupid house at home. If your father didn't teach you, shame on him. If your mother didn't share it with you, I'm sorry to hear that. But the bottom line is the whole purpose of business is to make and keep clients or customers. You see, that's what pays your fucking salary, little man, little girl. That's what pays for your life. Now, whether you get enough hours or not is usually based on your relationship with the manager and how they live their life. Some managers want to put their own people around them so that no matter what they do, legal or illegal, nobody gets caught. But what I'm saying to you is that's stupid because eventually all the shitbags get caught. You see, God is like that. God has some pretty standard rules in the world across every culture, every religion, and every good book that's, well, been translated in the world or channeled in the world. And one of those serious principles is, thou shall not steal. What I'm amazed at is I'm a little Catholic bitches who keep coming up to me and want to have a little social conversation, but then will do shit for me. And little Catholic boys that are trying to feed me with their leftover foods that they probably pulled from the trash to insult me. You see, what I look and see in their eyes is the lie. And then they play some dramatic thing where they drop it down on the ground as if I'm a dog. I'm like, I'm not your dog. Don't you fucking lay food down in front of me as if I'm your dog. I'm not your dog. I'm old enough to be your father. And if you did that to your father, he'd probably whip you or spank you or beat you across the fucking universe. Because if I was your father, I might do that. But here's the difference. My Japanese son knew how to behave. He never would do something like that. And he was trusted regularly with my food, my spouse's food, and our family food. He went shopping with us. He helped decide what we'd eat. He would make a marvelous meal that his mother taught him how. And we would take turns doing things. We also were really big on pizza and movie night, and that was our family thing. But your stupidity is thinking that when you're out in the world, you're not responsible for your adult behavior. If you're over fucking 20, if you're over fucking 18, if you're over 21, no offense, but in most states, you're an adult and fully liable. And I'm allowed to swear because I'm pagan, but it also gets people to pay the fuck attention. But if you don't care for my swearing, then just skip it in your mind and go to the content that I'm trying to share with you. That you are liable for what you do and how you behave, whether you're on a college playing a prank or whether you're in a business trying to make a living. But here's what I know about thieves is they never stop thieving. As a child, I learned about theft accidentally. And from that time on, I never th stole a fucking thing. I also learned about plagiarism and other things in school, just like everybody else. So I know how to write without stealing a thing. But there are people that want to pick up my artwork and do all this shit to me and take my property as if it's theirs and it's not. And they might have been siblings. But those people will end up in prison for thinking they had ownership of me. So if you're a stranger to me and you're distracting me with your friends so that they can put their hands in my packages and take things, you're a motherfucking moron. Because there are campus computers, not at all. There are security cameras all over the fucking street here and in almost every building, whether you see them or not. So your best bet is start to live the straight and narrow. But here's what I'm telling you. When I make a recording, I make it for the reasons that God is leading me on. I can't sometimes believe why God had me walk to this city in particular. But what I see is a city full of sinners, in particular from the Catholic community, who don't really regard poverty at all because of their arrogance and affluence of lifestyle that came from their parents that they didn't earn one cent of. So what I'm saying to you, if you're of that Catholic background, you are screwing yourself out of religious capabilities. You definitely don't have the Holy Ghost in you because you didn't do one thing for me. In the year that I've been here, only one person, one, count them, one, now possibly two, but it took a year practically for that to transpire, or maybe six months for sure. I don't want to exaggerate at all and be in a different while. But what I'm saying is only one person regarded my program. 
where they actually brought me a can of tea and a can of chicken, like I asked for. And the other day, I was fortunate, and then a young girl actually did part of that. She brought me bottles of tea, which I didn't like, and she brought me cans of chicken, which fed me for several days. And it was her generosity of soul that allowed me to eat and allowed me to focus on my job work, my focus on my what I'm here to do in the military, and focus on everything I'm trying to struggle and strive out of for my life. So if you want to help me, I say the same thing every day. Want to help me? Hand me some cash and I'll go buy the food that I need to eat for my body, for my allergies, for my preferences, and for my energy at my age. And I know precisely what certain foods does, does in my body by this stage of life. I know what it will do to me, whether it's something I'm allergic to or not. I know whether it's gluten-free or gluten-intolerant for me. But what I'm saying is you are no different. You might not have mastered everything about how food is handled in you because you haven't had a lot of experiences with food. But at nearly 53, I know precisely what's right for me. So let's talk about the program really briefly, and I'll wrap up. My program is pretty straightforward, and I carry simple signs and carry simple PowerPoints that I've made. But my program is One Man Helping One Man, M to M Mission. It stands for something important to me. It stands for some important people to me. But the reality is that during a time of COVID, we have a lot of food insecurities. And those food insecurities have to be handled with canned goods because canned goods are the safest food right now in America because most of it's been canned a long time ago before COVID. So if you're trying to eat safely and eat healthy for yourself, I encourage you to start looking at canned goods for your shelf. But basically what we're looking for in my program is cash, gift cards at certain places like Target that's marvelous or Jimmy John's or something like Circle K where there's pretty good burgers and uh, whatnot there that we can make and use for the day. But beyond that, we're looking for canned proteins and canned beverages. And that's usually a canned iced tea and a canned lemonade, canned chicken, canned ham, canned beef, canned pork. Canned tuna is a little bit of risk for most people because a lot of people have allergies to fishes. So I encourage you. The other option is a packet. Starkist has marvelous chicken salad packets. The only challenge you have to look at is, are you getting the right value for the size of packet? Sometimes it takes three packets to make a sandwich, and sometimes it takes two packets to make a sandwich, just depending on the size, obviously, in ounces of the package. But I'm not telling anything to you that you don't know in common sense. What everybody has to eat is a standard practice in the world. So when you begrudge somebody food, how do you think you fucking look to God? Jesus fed the masses. You don't have to feed the masses. But taking the moment to be moved by the Holy Ghost without letting any person in your life dissuade you from doing something good, like palming somebody 10 bucks or giving somebody a gift card that you purchase with your own credit card. And I prefer you don't purchase it with the credit card. I really prefer you purchase a gift card for yourself to utilize however you choose with cash. Because that means it cannot be recharged by the employee, abused by the employee, or, uh, or used and abused by the person you choose to give it to. Especially if they're not me. Many players know how to do that shit with their friends behind the counter. But what I'm saying is other foods that are good for us are things like beef jerky, as long as the package is really carefully sealed. Potato chips and other things like that are risk to people because any fucking Muslim, any Mexican, any person here illegally and immorally trying to be up to no good, as we swipe from the wonderful Harry Potter films, is knows how to open and reseal packages. So, that's my shtick. I hope you understand what I'm talking about today. But stop thieving, stop stealing from God's house, and stop interfering with people's lives.